So today topic is plant irritant poison. So it is very short lecture class. So these are the seven plant irritant poison. Okay. So and today content includes active principle, fatal dose, fatal period, sign and symptoms, and medical legal importance of this seven plant irritant poison. First one is called ricinus communis. So that is also, it is also called castor oil plant. So you can see the trees of ricinus communis. And on the right side, this is the fruit. And inside that fruit, seeds are present. So this is the ricinus communis seeds. So the whole parts of the castor oil plants are poisonous, but most poisonous is the seed. And the reason is, because the seed contain active principle called ricin. And this ricin cause agglutination and then lysis of red cell. Fatal dose is 6 mg of ricin or 5 crossed seeds. So the seed should be crossed so that the active principle that is inside the seed should, will get released and then react with acid, stomach acid or different kinds of enzyme to produce harmful effect or even death. So the seed should be crossed. <coughs> so unbroken seed. So when you swallow the whole seed with a chewing, it will become non-poisonous because the outer layer of the seeds prevent the absorption of the resin and castor oil and cooked seeds are non-poisonous because the resin is destroyed in this process. Fatal period is two to five days, and the symptoms that we see in ricinus communis poisoning is nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, the passion complaints of abdominal pain, and excessive nausea and vomiting, diarrhea leads to dehydration. There will be decreased blood pressure, muscle cramps, hemolysis, drowsiness, convulsion, and there is dysfunction or the failure of liver as well as renal. And the treatment includes only symptomatic treatment. So the symptomatic treatment includes such as giving anti-emetic medicine, so IV fluids. Okay. So in abdominal pain, you can give antispasmodic medicine, etc. So gastric lava should be done using potassium permanganate solution, and then demosin should be given. So there is no any specific antidote in case of ricinus poisoning only the symptomatic and stomach wash. The external postmortem finding, there is no any specific feature you will see. And in internal finding, so fragments of sheet can be present in the stomach and as well as on the intestine. And the gastric mucosa wall will appear congested and inflamed and all the internal organs will appear hemorrhagic in nature. Legal importance, first one is it can be accidental poisoning and the reason is it may be mistaken as edible seeds. And the second one is homicidal poisoning. And the third one, it, the seeds, the powder form of the this ricinus seeds can be used to produce conjunctivitis. So that is also called malingering. And the last one is it can be used as a deficient agent to induce abortion. Second one is Abros precatorius. So this is the plant. You can see the seeds. So same, whole parts of the plants are poisonous, but the seeds are mostly poisonous. So this is the seeds. So mostly used to make small unit of gold. And the active principle of Abros precatorius is abrin. And this abrin, mainly the injected form of the abrin will produce symptoms that is similar to viper snake bite. We have already discussed the symptoms of viper snake bite. So the local symptoms includes there will be presence of inflammation, edema, swelling, persistent bleeding, <coughs> blister formation, as well as local tissue necrosis. So the injected form of the abrin will mimic the symptoms of viper snake bite. 
and the fatal dose is 90 to 120 mg of abrin or 10 crossed seed. So the seeds should be crossed. Period three to five days, <coughs> and the symptoms same GI irritation symptoms can be seen, such as nausea, vomiting, there is presence of bloody diarrhea, abdominal pain, inflammation, edema, persistent bleeding, tissue necrosis in the puncture site. And treatment includes same stomach wash should be done using potassium permanganate solution in symptomatic treatment. We do not have any antidote. And the external postmortem finding. So the puncture mark on the skin may be seen in the injected form, and there is inflammation, bleeding, as well as local tissue necrosis. And the internal finding in case of oral intake. So the fragments of sheet can be seen in the stomach as well as on intestine, and there will be congestion and hemorrhage of internal organs. So the medical legal importance is it can be used as arrow poison. So the pointed tip of the arrow can be deep in the abrin and can be used as poison. And the second one is it is an ideal cattle poison. And the third one is same. It can be used to produce malingering. Same the powder form of the seeds can be used to produce malingering. And the last one is can be used as a deficient agent. Next one is semicarpus anacardium, or this one is also called dobies marking knot, mostly used by the dobies to mark on cloth. So this is the semicarpus anacardium knot or seeds. And the active principle includes semicarpal and villa vanol. So these two active principle has allergic reaction. And the fatal dose is 5 to 10 gram, fatal period 12 to 24 hours, and the symptoms increase. So when this active principle comes in contact with the skin, it will cause irritation of the skin, itchiness, and there is formation of painful blister that may be mistaken as bruise. And on oral intake, blister may be seen in the oral cavity, and there will be irritation of the GI system. So irritation of the GI system means the patient may complain of nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, etc. Treatment, same. Gastric lava should be done and then you can give demulsion and then next one is symptomatic treatment. And the postmortem finding includes, so there is blister formation in the mouth as well as on the throat and over the skin and the skin, there will be presence of congestion of the skin and inflammation of the stomach. Now the medical legal importance is, first one is, it is used to produce artificial bruise, or this is also called malingering in another trauma. And the next one, so the juice or the active principle of this semicarpus anacardium can be used to can be used to produce or can be used as vitriolase. And the third one is it can be used as a deficient agent. So vitriolase means any chemicals or substance that is used to produce or cause disfigurement of the body, any part of the body. So the juice can be used as a vitrolage. How to differentiate between the true as well as from the false bruise or artificial bruise? So we have already discussed this one on the injury chapter. So these are some of the features that is used to differentiate true bruise from artificial or false bruise. <clears throat> so the first feature is true produced by physical trauma and the artificial is produced by chemical, mostly the active principle of the plant irritant poison. 
and the second feature is true bruise it is present in anywhere any part of the body where is the artificial presence only on the accessible part and there is no formation of blister no itchiness or no scratch nail mark are seen in case of true bruise whereas in the case of artificial the patient will complain of itchiness you will see the nail scratch mark as well as there is presence of blister formation and then color changes is seen in case of true bruise whereas in the case of artificial there is no any color changes and then there is presence of vital reaction in true and absence in case of artificial and when you cut the skins so you will see the extra vasation of blood in case of true bruise whereas in case of artificial there is absence of extra vasation of blood Now the fourth one is capsicum anum, or this is also called chili seeds. So the active principle are capsicin and capsaicin. So these are the two active principle of chili. And the symptoms includes, so when this active principle comes in contact with the skin, it will cause irritation of the skin. So in case of eye contact, there is presence of lacrimation, burning pain, redness of eye, and the patient or the victim pass will complain of stomach pain and then there will be inflammation of the esophagus as well as stomach. So treatment in case of eye contact. Irrigation of the of the eye should be done using the run, running cold water and then ice cold water should be given and demotion should be given. So these two ice cold water and demotion will produce the soothing effect. So the medical legal importance, first one, it is used to produce conjunctivitis, same malingering. And the second one is chili powder can be used as torture agent, physical torture agent. And the third one, so the chili powder of the spray, when they are thrown into the eyes, it will facilitate robbery or it can be used for self-defense. The next one is calotropis. So this is the plant of calotropis. So when you break the leaves or the stem of the calotropis, you will you will see the milky exudate like this one. And this milky exudate also has allergic reaction in nature. And the active principle includes calotoxin, calotropin, and then oscarin. So these are the three active principle. And the symptoms <coughs> symptoms includes blister formation on the skin area. There will be presence of irritation, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And the treatment includes same stomach wash can be done, demotion can be given, and then symptomatic treatment. And the medical legal importance is it is used to produce artificial bruise. Same is that of semicarpus and acardium. Next one is Plumbago Zelenica or Plumbago Rosia. So they belong to the same family but different species. Active principle is Plumbagin. And the symptoms, treatment, and medical legal importance. They are same as that of Semicarpus anacardium and then Calotropis. Same, there is formation of distal formation. Treatment is same symptomatic treatment and medical legal impotences produce artificial bruise. This is the assignment for you. Two questions. Two questions. So mostly from the plant irritant poison, you will get MCQ question. Okay. So know the federal dose, know the active principle, and then medical legal importance.
So the class is over for now. So on coming Friday, we'll discuss another kinds of irritant poison. Okay, see you on Friday class.